Hi, I'm Domenica Rubino. I'm the director of the Washington Center for Weight Management and Research. Yeah, so in the Step 8 trial, uh, what we found was that the use of either semaglutide or liraglutide actually um, helped people with prediabetes revert to normal glycemia. Now in this group, because this was a post hoc analysis comparing semaglutide to liraglutide, semaglutide had a greater impact on about 25% more uh, individuals. However, the basic principle from that is that GLP-1s can help shift people from prediabetes to normal glycemia, both semaglutide and liraglutide. Um, and semaglutide resulted in more weight loss. So that actually is probably one of the reasons why we saw better normalization of glucose in that group. So first of all, the analysis around normal glycemia was a post-hoc analysis, meaning we did it afterwards, right? Um, but the actual design and the intent, um, it's the only paper actually to compare two GLP-1s in terms of weight. So the goal of it was to see what is the difference between those uh, individuals with obesity treated with semaglutide compared to those treated with liraglutide. And both of these doses were the doses that have been approved of for obesity, 2.4 milligrams weekly for semaglutide, three milligrams daily for liraglutide. So that was the goal. <laughs> and so um, what we found is a much greater proportion of individuals were able to, first of all, lose weight, but also lose more weight and lose greater amounts in what we call categorical body weight loss. So those who were um, given semaglutide, much, they were much more likely, 40% of the individuals were able to actually reach about 20% of weight loss, where a much smaller percentage were able to do that with liraglutide. So that really underscores a couple of important things. One is on the average, semaglutide appears to be more potent and supports greater weight loss or a greater number of individuals losing more weight However, the results also showed, which is what we've been learning over and over, is that there's individual responsiveness to these medications that we really can't predict. So some of the people on liraglutide actually were able to lose 20%, just a much smaller portion. So it really just emphasizes that we need a lot of tools because <laughs> there's a lot of people and we're all different. Um, but yeah, that was that was really the goal of the trial. And then we've we found other things, improvement in cardiometabolic uh, status and the improvement in blood sugar, which is what we presented at EASD. When we took a look at glycemic status uh, in the individuals with prediabetes in the Step 8 trial, um, what we found was that in comparison to the placebo group, certainly, but in comparison to the liraglutide group, semaglutide was much more likely to lower the fasting blood sugar, to improve insulin sensitivity with a greater uh, improvement in the um, HOMA insulin resistance index, uh, and also lower the A1C. And so for example, in the A1C, the estimated treatment difference uh, between liraglutide and semaglutide was an additional 0.22 percentage points on hemoglobin A1C. So what we just saw was, um, you know, approximately a third better uh, in terms of glucose, insulin, and A1C reduction with semaglutide compared to liraglutide when we specifically looked at people with prediabetes. Um, I can add something else. I mean, and, and then what we did see at week 68 is we just saw a greater proportion develop normal glycemia, about 25% more. Uh, and then about the same amount of people developed type 2 diabetes compared to semaglutide compared to liraglutide. So it was 2.7 to 2.6. However, what was important is those just treated with diet and lifestyle. Not as many actually went on to revert to normal glycemia, much less. And in fact, about 10, I believe it was 10.8. 10.6% actually went on to develop type 2 diabetes. So it also underscores really that we need to treat pre-diabetes and we need to normalize glucose much earlier. And in fact, I think there was just an announcement um, uh, 44 years later uh, after the UK diabetes prevention study where they actually showed that those treated with metformin and normalize their glucose earlier, did actually much better with microvascular and macrovascular effects. So I think this study really has context. 
that we really need to treat prediabetes. We need to recognize its risk for individual patients. And we want to normalize glucose as much as we can because of all of its, you know, effects. Thank you.